During World War I, due to the spread of fighting through trenches between the warring parties and the extensive use of artillery, which caused a significant number of casualties, European armies began to replace headgear made of leather and cloth with steel helmets. This change aimed to protect soldiers' heads from fragments of artillery shell explosions and also from shrapnel bullets. France took the lead in manufacturing steel helmets in 1915, and their design was known as the Adrian Helmet. In 1917, Britain introduced its distinctive steel helmet with a dish-like shape named the Brody Helmet. The British helmet was designed to safeguard soldiers' heads from shrapnel and falling shells while providing adequate visibility from the front and sides. The Brody helmet's specific shape facilitated faster and easier mass production compared to other helmet designs of that time. It involved pressing a sheet of steel into the desired shape. Additionally, the helmet was convenient for storage and transportation. As for the German helmets, referred to as the Stahlhelm, they were designed to offer maximum protection to the sensitive areas of soldiers' heads, such as the frontal and occipital lobes, as well as the right and left temporal lobes. These helmets were stronger than their British counterparts due to their construction with a special type of high-strength steel called Martensite steel. The German helmets, manufactured in 1916, featured two small projections resembling horns on their sides. These horns served the purpose of attaching an additional front steel plate called Sternpanzer, or the Brow Shield, which aimed at protecting soldiers mainly from sniper fire. The two small horns also served as ventilators. However, the weight increase caused by the steel plate led to its elimination in later versions of the Stahlhelm helmet. Although the Stahlhelm helmet was more robust than the British and French helmets, providing superior protection, it had some drawbacks. The two small horns on the sides allowed cold air to enter during winter, requiring soldiers to block these openings with mud or small pieces of cloth. Also, the extended edges on both sides of the helmet affected soldiers' ability to hear sounds clearly. The major drawback of German helmets was their high production cost compared to other types of helmets. The distinctive shape, combined with the use of a special, highly durable steel, necessitated the formation of the Stahlhelm in heated dyes, resulting in a greater unit cost than the British helmet, which could be formed in one piece. This significantly increased the cost of manufacturing each helmet. Additionally, the production process for German helmets was slower and more complex compared to British helmets. Interestingly, the designs of British and German helmets in both world wars had historical roots. The British Brody helmet took inspiration from the helmets used in Britain and France during the 13th and 14th centuries. On the other hand, the German helmet drew inspiration from the widely used helmets in Germany, Italy, and Hungary in the mid-15th century.